In the last lecture, we learned about streams in theory. We learned that in Node.js, we have four types of streams. The readable stream, the writable stream, the duplex stream, and the transform stream. Now, in this lecture, let's understand streams with some practical examples. Let's go to VS Code. And here, I have commented all the codes from our previous lecture. The only code which I have not commented is this create server method where we are creating a server and then this listen method where we are listening to the requests on the server. And here in this project, I have also added a new file called largefile.txt and this file has around 1 million lines of text. Now what we want is whenever a new request hits the server, we want to read this largefile.txt and we want to send the content of this largefile.txt in the response. Okay, so let's try to do it in conventional way first. So here what I'm going to do is, every time a new request hits this server, this server is going to raise a request event. So here we want to listen to that request event. For that, on this server, which is going to be the event emitter, let's call this on method for listening to the event. And here we want to listen to request event. And when this request event happens, we want to execute some logic. For that, we are going to pass a callback function here to this on method. And this callback function is going to receive two objects, the request object and the response object. All right. Now, when a new request hits the server, this request event will be raised. And from within this callback function, we want to write the logic to read the data from this large file.txt and send it in the response. Now, to read the data, the content of this large file.txt on the FS module, we are going to use this read file method. So this read file is going to read the data of this large file.txt and it is going to read it asynchronously. Now here, we also need to specify the path of the file. So this file is present inside the files folder and in that files folder, we have this large file.txt and when the data is completely read from this file we can use that data by calling a callback function and this callback function is going to receive the error object if any error occurs and it is also going to receive the data if the read file method has properly read the data without any error and this read file method will assign this data variable with the content of this large file.txt only after it has read the content of this file completely. So once this read file method reads the content of this large file.txt and once the reading is complete, it is going to assign that content to this data variable. And once we have the content of this large file.txt inside this data variable, we want to send that content in the response. So here inside this callback function, inside the callback function of this read file, on this response object, we are going to use this end method. And to this end method, we are going to pass the data as the response. Okay. But before sending this response, let's also check if there is no error. For that, let's use this if statement. And there we check if this error is null. So basically, if there is no error, in that case, this error will be assigned with the value null. And null is a falsy value. In that case, this condition will become false. But if there is any error which has occurred, in that case, this error variable will be assigned with that error object. And the object is a truthy value. So in that case, this condition will return true. And when this condition is true, that means when some error has occurred, in that case, in the response, we want to send a text saying that something went wrong. And then we immediately want to return. Okay, but if there is no error, that means this read file method has read the content of this large file.txt and it has assigned it to this data variable. So in that case, we want to send that data in the response. With this, let's save the changes. Let's start the server by running this app.js file. And let's go to the browser. And let's make a request to the server. So for that, I will simply refresh this page. And you will notice that here we are receiving the content from the large file.txt. But if you notice, this spinner is continuously loading. That means the data here is still loading. 
and this loading spinner will only stop when the data is completely written here in the response stream. So as you can see, it is still loading. So the problem here with this approach is that we are reading a very large file. So this data variable is going to store a very huge data. And once that data is completely read from this large file.txt, that data will be stored in the memory. And then from the memory, that data will be sent in the response. Okay, so even though this approach works just fine, but the problem here is that with this solution, Node will have to actually load the entire file into the memory because only after that it can send the data in the response. And this is a problem when the file is big and also when there are tons of requests hitting our server because the Node.js process will very quickly run out of the resources in this case and our app might quit working and everything might crash and the user will not be happy with that. So this solution here is okay when we are reading a small file or when we are using it locally for development purpose. But we cannot use this approach in the production environment because in the production environment, we don't want our application to crash. Now, the solution to this problem here is that we can use stream. So I will copy this code from here and I will also comment it and let's go ahead and let's paste it here. Okay, so this is our solution one. And in this solution, we are not using readable or writable stream. Actually, we are using writable stream because if you remember from our last lecture, this response which we get here, this is actually a writable stream. Okay, but here we are not using any readable stream. We are reading all the data at once and then we are sending all the data at once in the response. Now let's see another approach where we are going to use the readable and writable stream. And in this approach, we are actually going to create a readable stream from where we will read the content of this large file.txt piece by piece. And to do that, what we need to do is let me remove all this code from here. And on this FS module, we have a method called create read stream. So this create read stream method, it is going to create a new stream, a readable stream. And we can assign that readable stream to a variable. Let me call it RS as readable stream. And this create read stream also takes a file path. So here, let's specify the file path of this large file.txt. So it is in files folder. In there, we have this large file.txt. Okay. So here, we have created a readable stream. Now, when this readable stream will start reading data from this large file.txt, it is going to read that data in chunks, in pieces. And every time it reads a new piece of data, it is going to emit a data event. So what we are going to do is on this readable stream, we are going to listen to that data event. So here to this on method as the first parameter, let's pass this data, the event name, and then let's also specify a callback function which we want to execute whenever the data event is raised. And in here, in this callback function, we are going to receive that chunk of data which this readable stream has read. So here, let's call this variable as chunk. So let's say the file is of size 100 MB. So what this read stream will do is, it will, let's say, read 10 MB of data first, and then it will assign that data to this chunk variable. And then it will read next 10 MB of data. And again, it will reassign it to this chunk variable. And in this way, it will read these data in chunks. And every time it reads that chunk of data, it is going to assign it to this chunk variable, this chunk parameter. And what we want to do is, as soon as we have the chunk of data, we want to send it in the response. For that, I can say response.int, like we have used earlier. But here, Instead of using this end method, we should use write method. Why? Because the end method is basically used to tell that all the data has been written to the write stream and no more data is available to write. But in our case, we are going to receive the data in chunks, in pieces. So we want to call this end method only after we have read all the chunks from the readable stream. If I use in method here, in that case, what will happen is as soon as we receive the first chunk of data, 
we are going to pass it to this in method and this in method will write that chunk of data in the response stream and it will close that response stream it will not write anything else after that in this response stream and we don't want that we want to write each chunk of data which we receive here inside this callback function so here instead of using int method we are going to use write method and this write method can write multiple chunks of data in the response stream so when we will receive the first chunk of data this write method is going to write that in this response stream and when we receive the second chunk of data again it will write that second chunk of data into this response stream then again when we receive the third chunk of data it is going to write that third chunk of data into this response stream okay so it will keep on writing the chunk of data the piece of data which we are receiving to this response stream and when we have written all the chunks of data into this response stream and when there is no more chunk of data which is available to write to this response stream in that case we want to call this in method just to signal that there is no more data to write in this response stream okay so basically we use this in method for that we use this in method to signal that there is no more data which we want to write to the response stream okay so in this way now we are sending the data we are sending the response in chunks we are not sending all the data which we have read from this large file.txt at once in the response stream now we are sending it piece by piece and in this way what will happen is whenever a new piece of data will be available that piece of data will be only stored in the memory and then it will be sent in the response and once it is sent in the response that data which we have stored in the memory that will be removed and then when the next chunk of data will be available again only that chunk of data will be stored in the memory and then it will be sent in the response and then it will be removed from the memory and this process will continue until we receive the last chunk of data and in this way we are going to save a lot of memory because now instead of storing all the data from this large file.txt into the memory now we are storing a piece of data in the memory and in this way we are saving a lot of memory another thing to note here is that since we are sending the data in chunks the user will be able to use that data or in our case in our example the user will be able to see the data as soon as the first chunk of data arrives in the response okay the user here does not have to wait for complete data to arrive in order to see the data the user can start seeing the data as soon as the first chunk of data we send in the response all right with this let's save the changes let me stop the server by pressing ctrl c and let's also go ahead and let's run this app.js file to restart the server all right now let's go to the web page and let's refresh this page and here you will notice that now this loading spinner is not loading continuously now what is happening is it is receiving a chunk of data it is displaying that chunk of data here in this browser and then once it receives the next chunk of data it is going to display that chunk of data so basically instead of receiving all the data at once now we are streaming the data this text data which we are displaying here from our server from our node.js app all right so here we are listening to this data event now when we are reading a file using this create read stream method it might be possible that some error occurs for example let's say we are specifying a file name but that file name does not exist so in our files folder there is no file with this name large1-file.txt right so in this case we are going to get an error and we can handle that error by listening to the error event so whenever an error happens while reading the file when we are using this create read stream in that case this create read stream is going to emit an error event and we can also listen to that error event on this readable stream so again on this readable stream let's say on so we are going to use this on method to listen to an event and here we want to listen to error event and when this error event happens we are going to receive the error object here so for this callback function we are going to receive the error object and when an error happens in the response we want to send that error message so here i am going to use this in method because here we only want to write single piece of data here we are not going to receive chunks of data right so we are going to write a single piece of data and then using this in method we are going to signal that there is no more data we want to write to the response stream so using this in method let's also send a response saying that something went wrong or maybe 
we can send the error message itself. So on this error object, we are going to have a message property which is going to store the actual error message and we want to send that error message in the response. With this, let's save the changes. Let's stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and let's restart the server. Let's go to the web page and here let me refresh the page. And now you will notice that now we are getting an error and the error says there is no such file or directory with this file path and this file name. All right. So this is how we can handle errors using the read stream. Now you might ask here I have created a readable stream, but what about writable stream? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this response itself is a writable stream. If we want to write the content of this large file.txt into another file, in that case, we will have to create a writable stream. And then we can write the content of this large file.txt into another file. But here, since this response is already a stream, here we don't need to do anything to create a response stream. So this approach is working as expected. Here, we are streaming the data which we are reading from this large file.txt. Now, this approach also has a small disadvantage. And we will talk about that disadvantage and how to overcome that in our next lecture. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.